I want to give you a short uh, overview about our um, company structure. So uh, as everyone probably uh, knows, FAST was sold uh, to Group Claire uh, four years ago. And uh, Claire is now divided in uh, two sections. Uh, one is uh, the Claire products. I will enable my uh, pointer. So now you can see my pointer. Um, Claire products which is, let's say, traditional products like valves and uh, water meters. Um, yeah, everything uh, needed for water supply uh, infrastructure. And uh, the second branch is uh, Claire Connect. And Claire Connect is uh, then divided again in uh, FAST, which is us, and Iginis. I will give you a little bit more uh, overview um, in my next slide. Um, the um, fast our company uh, is uh, the activity uh, only for leak detection um, and all solutions for water networks. Uh, you see some products here in the bottom. Um, I will come back to that uh, later on. We do, at the moment, last year, we did an excellent year with 4 million uh, turnover with 31 people, professionals, with a very big uh, head of development. So we are a very innovative company and uh, we are uh, focusing a lot on uh, innovations and uh, new technologies. Okay, the other uh, company, would. I want to introduce to you um, is Iginus. If my presentation will slip over, uh, now it worked. I hope I didn't press too many times. But uh, Iginus is a very our uh, most recent uh, purchase into the group. Um, it's also a very innovative and uh, attractive company. Uh, so they are together with us in this Claire Connect uh, uh, division of Group Claire. And uh, Ishinus is a company focusing on uh, control and monitoring uh, mainly of uh, sewage uh, uh, networks. Uh, so they do remote data transmission uh, meters uh, and, and devices. Um, and uh, together with them, we want to strengthen our R&D research and development to uh, drive more the innovation part of uh, these uh, new products. Okay, um, but we don't want to focus on uh, this. Uh, we are from FAST, as you know. Uh, therefore, we want to focus more on the products and uh, developments from uh, our um, company. Okay, I have some problems with the slides. They don't turn over as quickly as I wish. Takes a long time. Maybe there is some delay due to the big amount of participants. Ah, now I have found a new way how to slip over. <laughs> it's quicker. Okay, I uh, want to introduce now solely FAST as uh, we are our uh, focusing on uh, non revenue water and our uh, on leak detection equipment. Uh, so the title of it is uh, We Are Your Leak Detection Expert. Okay, um, if we talk about leak detection, we need to uh, look on this terminology of water losses which is the table um, uh, done by the IWA, International Water Association. And uh, you see here the red part is the part which uh, fast products cover. All the other um, uh, fields, we cannot do anything. So there is uh, no product from FAST which can uh, reduce apparent losses, for example, or un unbuilt authorized consumption. Um, so we are focusing on the real losses only. 
and there in specific uh, on leakages on transmissions or distribution mains, leakages on overflows and uh, utility uh, storage tanks, leakages on service connections up to the point of customer metering. Customer metering, of course, uh, in Germany, it's uh, the rule. All the water after the meter is paid by the customer. Therefore, uh, the water company only uh, focuses until this point uh, with the leak detection activity. Okay, for uh, the leak detection of the real losses, in specific, uh, we have uh, draft this uh, very nice pyramid. Uh, we call it pyramid principle or pyramid mode. And uh, we always start from the bottom um, of the pyramid with some uh, monitoring of our network. So each infrastructure um, needs to be um, monitored, supervised, uh, and uh, we need to know what's going on there. Therefore, we need some um, measurement devices to know what is going on, uh, what, for example, is the flow, what is the uh, volume of water which is getting consumed. And uh, only if we have these figures and numbers, we can judge how much water we are losing in our network and uh, maybe also can already sectionize uh, to know in what uh, sections we can concentrate our leak detection efforts. Okay, and uh, above the, the baseline or the, the basis of leak detection, we have the monitoring uh, through noise principle. Noise principle means um, we are detecting and recording already the minimum sounds of the network, which is this uh, specific value or measurement data uh, to know if you have leakages close by or not. I'll come back to that later on. Um, and above that, we are then already going into the different sections of the infrastructure and we do pipe and object locating. If you don't have existing GIS maps, uh, the maps are uh, of course needed to know where is the pipeline and where you need to concentrate your leak detection activity. Um, above that, we are going onto the different sections or DMAs and we uh, do pre-locating the leaks that we uh, know already, uh, for example, between which valves we uh, have to pinpoint the leaks. Um, and above that, we are usually going in and uh, do a correlation. That means we are able to um, really calculate the exact position of the leakage. And on the top end, uh, the real goal, of course, is always to pinpoint the leakage and to know the exact position uh, so that we excavate only as much as it is needed for repairing the damage of the water network. Okay, uh, next slide will show you um, the same pyramid of success, we call it in here. Um, and uh, you see here already some products related uh, to each of the pyramids steps. And uh, yeah, in the next few slides, we will go into the details of each of these pyramid uh, modes and pyramid of success. Okay, uh, for example, monitoring of flow. We have here, uh, two different measurement devices which can uh, help you with the monitoring of the flow in your uh, water infrastructure. Uh, the one here on the left is the SEPM Ultra Mobile, which is quite new. We already introduced it two years ago at IFAD, uh, what, what was uh, during that time a very new uh, device. Since then we have uh, yeah, achieved a lot of uh, good measurement results, a lot of very good feedback from our customers. And uh, now finally it's uh, kicking off uh, quite nicely. And uh, this uh, device is uh, very uh, mobile 
portable ultrasonic flow meter. Uh, the second one, uh, ZM only, ZM, which is German stands for zone monitoring. Um, you can also internationalize it, zone monitoring uh, in English. Uh, this one is a portable inductive flow meter. So that means you need to connect uh, the pipe uh, to the measurement device and uh, then you can uh, monitor the flow. Okay, um, for the ZM Ultra Mobile, because it's such a very nice tool and uh, really helping you to uh, exactly monitoring the flow in your water network, I go into it a little bit more into de details. Uh, like I said, it's ultrasonic flow meter, clamp on type. That means you can only uh, attach the sensor on the surface of the pipe and it will uh, start recording and monitoring the flow inside the pipe. It has a very long lasting battery. Uh, the standalone time is up to one year in a cyclic mode with five minute intervals. Uh, we have the capacity of uh, attaching or inserting two batteries into it, so uh, which is extending the lifetime of uh, the instrument, or not the lifetime, but the measurement time without recharging uh, by double if you use uh, two batteries at the same time. It has a very ruggedized uh, case, which is IP68 with a closed lid. Um, and the unique feature of this is you can very comfortable uh, set up and uh, uh, yeah, manipulate the data through Wi-Fi enabled devices. That means you only take your smartphone or you uh, use your tablet or even your uh, laptop or PC, which is uh, Wi-Fi um, able to communicate. And uh, you connect to the device through Wi-Fi. The device, the ZM Ultra Mobile, uh, acts as a router then. And uh, you can uh, then do the full range of settings, uh, also choose the type of data, what you um, want to record, also the units you want to re uh, record, for example, gallons for the US, or what are the units you want to do. Um, we have two versions of the Satem Ultra Mobile. First version is standard. Uh, that means you, it's working as a data logger. Uh, you attach the sensors to the pipeline, you record the data, and you need to go there on the measurement uh, site to download the data either directly to your Wi-Fi enabled device, or you connect the USB stick for downloading the data on your USB stick. Uh, the second version is an uh, integrated GSM GPRS modem. Uh, with this, you are able to transfer that data automatically. You can also set it if you want to uh, send the data once a day or twice a day or how often you want to send the data and also the volume of the data, uh, how much data you want to send, uh, either by email, which is the most simplest uh, uh, way, or uh, through uh, FTP server. That means on the other end, you need to integrate then a protocol to read the data. The measurement uh, principle is transit time, as you can see here in the picture. Um, that means it's a very accurate uh, flow measurement uh, calculation, uh, which is uh, based on the uh, time deviation the signal uh, needs to travel uh, with the flow and against the flow. Of course, with the flow, you have shorter transit time uh, of the signal than against the flow. And uh, with this time deviation, you can uh, calculate the exact uh, flow velocity. And together with the section of the pipeline cross section, you can calculate the uh, flow rate. Um, with this device, which is also unique, uh, you are able to measure two paths in the same time. Uh, that means uh, it's um, for um, sections of or, or um, yeah, sections of the pipeline where you can't 
uh, keep the uh, uh, five time D before the uh, installation of the sensors and uh, three times D after the installation of uh, the sensors if you have some obstacles or reductions or uh, some bends or uh, whatever. And therefore, <coughs> with this, uh, you are able to connect two pairs of sensors at the same time. And uh, you can uh, then uh, reduce the influence of uh, turbulences on the sections uh, by installing two pairs of sensors on the same uh, measurement place. In the future, it will be also possible to measure with two sensors, two pairs of sensors on two different uh, pipes, which is a very, very interesting application, especially for uh, tanks or uh, storage tanks. Yes. Um, so you can monitor the exact inflow and outflow of the tank, and, uh, which enables you very easily to detect leakages and overflows uh, from your tank, from your storage tank. Um, yeah, like I said, it's a very, very accurate flow metering and a very unique device in the market, especially the standalone time of uh, the battery. <clears throat> okay, we are then going a little bit forward, already stepping into the monitoring of a noise principle. Um, the noise principle uh, means we are recording and measurement, measuring always uh, during the night times, because usually in the night you have the most quiet times, the uh, minimum noise. And uh, this data, which is recorded, uh, is sent out then uh, either uh, directly to uh, cloud-based software, which we call water cloud this fast. Um, or you can also go out into the field with your uh, receiver, that means a tablet and service master, to directly read the data from the loggers through radio. <clears throat> okay, what happens if a leak is close by, like uh, shown in this uh, small illustration in here? Um, the logger will record uh, louder noise as the loggers which are further away of course from the leaks um, and this minimum noise so will be then uh, increasing and every day uh, as far as you have the same pressure inside the system you can um, see uh, increasing of the um, leak uh, sound so that you will know quite specific that the leak um, is really growing for example uh, every every leak is uh, always growing it won't get smaller There's a few cases maybe where this happens if a rock falls down and then blocks the leak again but usually each leak is uh, growing and therefore we have more energy available uh, to create more sound and with this uh, sound, we um, can really precisely and, and, and accurate uh, evaluate if a leak is present in the proximity or not. <clears throat> okay, uh, now you see here on the top left, uh, the small pyramid again, uh, we are now in the section of pipe searching. I want to talk a little bit about the solution we can offer for uh, pipe searching with FAST. Um, we have the uh, unique uh, acoustic pipe searching devices, a PWG pulse wave generator. Uh, we have electromagnetic locators, which is actually not uh, own FAST built device uh, and developed. Um, but we have also um, object locators like our MD100 uh, to also detect, for example, metal pipes. Okay, pulse wave generator, PWG is a unique uh, device in the market, uh, which is uh, able to acoustically locate pipelines. That means you need to connect it uh, to 
the accessible spots of the pipeline, that means uh, either hydrants or washouts. And uh, the PWG is nothing else than a very sharp shutting and closing of a valve. And with this sharp opening and shutting of the valve, uh, you introduce small pressure waves inside the pipeline and they um, propagate inside the pipe and uh, kind of make it vibrate uh, a little bit. And this sound can be heard on the surface, uh, which then can be uh, picked up by a ground microphone. And on the top of the pipe, you will always have the maximum sound intensity. And uh, then you can spray, for example, shown in this uh, illustration, the dots with the maximum uh, sound intensity. And you assume that always under these maximum sounds, uh, you have the pipeline uh, laying. And uh, the uh, very big benefit of this device is it works for all kinds of materials. Of course, it's specially designed for plastic pipes because in plastic pipes, you always have the uh, problem that the electromagnetic uh, cable locators and, and pipe locators um, cannot be applied. They are not conductive for any electronic signal. Um, and yeah, so the plastic pipes is the most suitable. So you don't need to introduce, for example, a flexi trace to trace the plastic pipe, but you just simply connect the PWG, uh, let it operate and uh, detect the sound with your uh, ground microphone or geophone in this case. <clears throat> I leave out the um, electromagnetic uh, locators because they are not uh, our own uh, developed and produced products. We sell a few brands, for example, Radio Detection, uh, now very new Vivax Metrotech, which is a very good and reputable brand as well, and uh, also Cisco. Um, but we don't have our own manufactured. Uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, pipe locator. Okay, the um, second one for the pipe searching, which is a kind of a side um, uh, application, because the main application of the MD100 is to uh, detect uh, hidden objects, for example, valve cha chambers or um, uh, spindles of uh, of valves uh, which get buried by accident or for example the road workers when they construct a new surface of the road they just put uh, the asphalt over it and it's uh, buried <laughs> so you won't find it anymore so this is uh, the main application but you can also detect of course iron pipes with it um, it works until the depths of two to two and a half meters if you can operate in the maximum sensitivity um, and it's quite successful. And of course, what you always find, uh, where you always find the biggest signal is on the joints or bends of the pipeline, because usually you have a bigger iron mass at uh, these positions. But I tried it also here in our test field and it works quite uh, just fine. But uh, it is, um, yeah, not suitable for very deep buried pipelines and also if you have for example in a city a lot of cars parking around uh, which just interfere with your uh, flux gate uh, sensors um, we have a very high sensitivity through the double flux gate so we have two sensors inside this carbon fiber tube um, and like i said uh, you can uh, measure up to two and a half meter uh, deep into the ground without any signal, active signal needs to be applied uh, to the uh, surrounding. We have a calibration function for um, fading out unwanted objects. Uh, so we can always uh, say if we find, for example, a fence close by and we don't uh, want this fence to be shown on the signal, we can calibrate and uh, then we will find 
uh, only objects which, which has a bigger signal than uh, the unwanted. Uh, together that, with that, we have the 50 Hertz warning. This is only an additional function to know already if you want to excavate an area to dig out uh, a valve spindle, for example, um, that you need to go there with a cable and pipe uh, locator to find the um, power cables in order if you excavate Everyone knows how dangerous uh, this can be. Okay, this is just an additional feature. It won't substitute, substitute a real cable locator. So it's always wise and, and recommended to use a cable locator uh, prior of excavating an area. It won't substitute this uh, function. Okay, now we are already in the middle of the pyramid on the pre-locating section. Uh, Pre-locating means always uh, we know already a zone, we know an area uh, where we lose the water. Now we want to focus on the specific uh, sections of the pipeline uh, in order to uh, find the pinpointing area of the leakage. Okay, we have um, again here two uh, principles. Uh, one is the manual work everyone uh, can uh, carry not everyone you need to be experienced but uh, the water companies knows that um, with uh, so-called listening devices that means you manually uh, walk around inside the zone inside your water uh, infrastructure you open up lots of chambers lots of uh, uh, valve uh, covers and uh, connect your listening device and you manually judge if the sound you are hearing is a close by leak or if it's maybe an ambient noise or if there is no sound at all. And um, of course a much better working principle nowadays is the noise loggers uh, which do all this job uh, during a two hour period, not only a, a fraction of this. Usually the people walking around in the network, they don't have much time, so they open up a chamber, they listen maybe for one minute, two minute maximum for the sound, and then they uh, go to the next spot. And the noise logger do this all the time during two hours at the night. Uh, that means they have a much wider window where they listen for the, the sound and uh, therefore they are also more accurate or let's say the data you get from the logger uh, is more valuable uh, than that from the manual labors going inside uh, your infrastructure but still the manual operators of uh, listening devices are still uh, very valuable too of course i won't uh, um, say that uh, only noise loggers is uh, the solution. Um, yeah. Some uh, acoustic listening devices which uh, FAST offers uh, for uh, this working principle is uh, shown in here. Uh, we have the small pocket sized uh, uh, devices like our Aqua M40 with Bluetooth headphones. Uh, we have our sole uh, mechanical listening device, listening stick, we call it HM, mechanical listening stick. Uh, now I will introduce that later on a little bit in the new developments as well, uh, in a new design, a new resonance chamber, which is uh, giving a much nicer sound to your ear, easier to charge then. Uh, also our Aqua M50, which is also a handheld device. Uh, you see here in the illustrations uh, how they might be applied and what they do, uh, especially the electro-amplified uh, listening devices, they amplify the signal, what uh, gets picked up by the sensor uh, by a hundred thousand times and uh, make it much more audible for the human ears. The same with the mechanical listening stick, but there it's not electro amplified, it's only mechanically amplified. 
uh, through the resonance chamber. Everyone knows the, the effect of uh, resonance, for example, with the wired um, can telephone uh, you uh, play with as when you probably have been a child as well. I played with it, so you know uh, the effect of uh, resonance and uh, the audible signal. If someone speaks into it, the other one listens to it. Same effect with the mechanical listening stick here. Okay, <clears throat> now we are going forward to the top of the pyramid. Uh, now we are going to the correlation. Correlation is also a principle of pinpointing, but because it's such a sophisticated and uh, traditional old technology, we took it out. And it's also one of the um, core technology our company FAST is uh, based on. Correlation uh, was the baby of FAST, so um, maybe everyone knows the, the history of FAST. Uh, 35 years ago, the first correlator was invented uh, by my uncle and Hans Peter together. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, what a correlator does, it uh, correlates, uh, means compares a signal uh, of two sensors which gets installed on accessible spots of uh, your infrastructure. Again, here we usually use hydrants or valve uh, valves or washouts. And uh, they indicate the exact location of the leak um, through a simple equation and calculation of the two signals, which is again a time deviation. And uh, the correlator only needs uh, the parameters as pipe material, diameter, and the length of the pipeline uh, in order to show you the exact position of the leak. <clears throat> okay, here we see some products related uh, for correlators. We come back to uh, introducing the products more specific in the different webinars throughout the week. Uh, for example, correlators we will uh, uh, do on Wednesday, I think. Uh, I'm right, hope this information, but you, you've seen my schedule in the beginning of the presentation. Um, okay, we have Local 400 is our newest uh, development. Yes, on Wednesday we will have uh, Local 400 and Local 200 PC as presentation. Um, local 200 PC, which is our mobile um, professional, or let's say uh, our um, core correlator, um, simple, the, the, the best correlator in the market. Um, it's uh, PC based <coughs> and uh, operated through a Windows uh, uh, program operated on the PC. The same for the stationary local 100. This is usually built in uh, measurement vans and uh, therefore, uh, yeah, it has a kind of standalone, uh, but it's kind of similar product to local 200 PC. It's also uh, PC operated. Um, but has a different computing unit, which is stationary and larger than the one used in the local 200 PC. Also the price difference is a little bit different, but uh, yeah. So these are our uh, core correlators, uh, which uh, um, are really uh, needed for uh, the daily work in, for leak detection. Uh, what has a little bit of side uh, application of correlation is our BD noise loggers. The BD noise loggers are nowadays also capable of uh, correlating two signals of two uh, noise loggers. Um, but of course, you see also the size difference between the, the logger and maybe here it's not clear, but for the correlator, you also need measuring boxes, which are large. And the BD noise loggers are sm such small devices uh, and they are so powerful nowadays. Um, but the difference 
between, uh, I call it real-time correlator, our correlators here on the left side, and an offline correlator like our uh, BD noise logger, which is recording the sound, uh, and then you calculate or you correlate these recordings uh, is huge or big. Um, it works for instant measurements inside, uh, if you go inside and there is no, not much ambient influence and you don't need to filter out uh, any frequencies and so on, then let's say in 80% of the cases you are successful even with the noise loggers. Um, but for the, the difficult cases and often you know leak detection is difficult, um, it's much simpler, uh, simpler and uh, easier to operate with a real-time correlator in the field which gives you a quicker result, a more reliable result. You can interfere much more uh, with the settings uh, directly when you're on site with the BD noise logger. Uh, you also have these uh, possibilities, but you need to um, always um, yeah, record new files and calculate this file additionally when something went wrong. Okay, um, then we are already on the tip, on the top of the pyramid uh, at the section of the pinpointing. And uh, as you know, uh, leak detection is always uh, required to know the exact location, to excavate and to repair the damage uh, accordingly. Okay, we have uh, nowadays uh, three different solutions let's say four, if you count in correlators too. Um, I show the three products here in this slide, uh, the cheerphones or crown microphones, um, our Aqua M uh, series, for example, um, the tracer gas method, uh, which is, uh, um, yeah, uh, application or uh, method to uh, apply in very difficult uh, areas where you have lots of noises. You can't uh, shut off any machines because they are 24 seven on shift. Uh, then uh, tracer gas is the best and more safe, most safe uh, application for still pinpointing these leakages. Uh, nowadays, I have to say it got substituted a little bit also by the pipe mic because also the pipe mic can be applied in very, very uh, loud and ambient polluted uh, environments. Um, and because you are inside the pipeline, you won't uh, get the influence of uh, the um, ambient and, and, and environmental noises. <coughs> okay. Um, next slide. Uh, introduce uh, the existing uh, products, which uh, probably most of you already know, uh, because most of you are selling them already. Uh, our newest, uh, it's not so new anymore, because we also have it since 10 years in the market, but um, the Aqua M300 is our uh, uh, yeah, best selling product, uh, I would say, uh, which has a color touch display and a lot of settings you can do inside the machine and uh, also you have a very very uh, wide variety of filter options which gives you really the capability to filter out uh, exact frequencies and therefore shut off other unwanted frequencies. The Aquam 100 I am working really really uh, well with this and um, we also still sell a great number of these devices. They are very sophisticated. They are um, um, using a very uh, well-developed uh, um, amplification of the signals and also very well-developed filter options. You see here we have six preset filters. Um, and uh, here you also have in the display the history of the old measurement data. The M200 is uh, 
I would say similar to the M100, but it just has a bigger display, uh, which is more easy to read and understand for the operator. Okay, for the tracer gas detectors, we have uh, these two products. Uh, again, the Aqua M300, you see it's not only a listening device and geophone, it's also a tracer gas detector. This is also one of the reasons why it's uh, one of our best seller um, in the market. Um, you just simply connect the tracer gas sensor and um, with this, you can directly in the field uh, measure the concentration of uh, H2 hydrogen. Uh, standalone unit is the gas check. With the gas check, you can <coughs> also um, yeah, detect the tracer gas, which usually uh, should always come up on the position of uh, the leakage. Okay, then uh, our unique pipe mic series. Uh, you see here uh, uh, queued up our uh, most recent development, uh, pipe mic flex, pipe mic M and pipe mic XL. Uh, the difference is always the diameter of the core, uh, fiberglass core, and therefore the flexibility of it. Uh, so the black cable is the most flexible one. Uh, we have the same outer diameter, but not the same inner core diameter of the pipe mic M. Um, this, the, the flex gives you a pushing distance of maximum um, 50 meters in a DN50 pipe. And um, the pipe mic M can uh, be pushed up till 90 meters in a DN50 pipe. And the pipe mic XL uses a nine millimeter uh, push rod, um, which is uh, able to push uh, up to 300 meters. But uh, I have to say 300 meters is really tough work to, to push this distance with the XL. Okay, um, we can, uh, we have always integrated disinfection container. So it's uh, also a quite safe application, even in drinking water. Uh, everyone knows uh, it's uh, heavily regulated and uh, we always have to obtain uh, certificates and um, for introducing anything. We always need to be cautious about inserting anything in uh, drinking water pipelines. Therefore, we have uh, developed this disinfection container. Uh, to also um, uh, take care of these uh, special hygienic uh, measures. Uh, but of course, it's not substituting uh, the, uh, or, or releasing the, um, the people who apply this technology uh, from their um, obligations to uh, take, uh, undertake the measures for uh, yeah, a safe application. But I always argue um, as well in the, in the name of uh, hygienics, uh, we are always um, locating uh, issues and things uh, in the water network, which has a much greater contamination uh, probability than uh, yeah, the contamination which could happen through the application of such a device like the pipe mic. <clears throat> okay, uh, now we are getting onto the uh, new products, which just recently got developed uh, and finished from our development team. Um, and I will also give you a short uh, development uh, uh, outlook. Uh, what is planned for the future. Uh, so we also focus a little bit on that. Okay, what is uh, new? We have uh, shown it already uh, last IFA 2018, but uh, like similar to the ZM Ultra Mobile, uh, we have uh, sold and, and, and demonstrated a lot of uh, 
units to our clients and especially to our um, dealers and uh, got a very good uh, feedback and uh, now it's getting uh, sales is increasing a lot uh, with this uh, mv6 and also formerly we still had mv4 and uh, mv3 which are still quite good uh, measuring boxes uh, but um, the mv6 uh, has a unique feature you can uh, order them as standard uh, or professional version the difference uh, between the standard and professional version is uh, the filter options you have uh, so with the standard version you have five filter options in the professional version you have unlimited uh, filters similar to the m300 you can pick out peaks really really precisely uh, with this correlator or with these uh, measuring boxes um, you have a very big display so you see here in the illustrations uh, two displays one is uh, showing you the maximum or minimum maximum sound uh, the other one is showing you the uh, frequency uh, uh, distribution uh, so we call it fft fast fourier transformation of the frequencies <clears throat> which uh, enables you already to set the correct filter range on the box uh, due to this very nice uh, display and um, yeah so you can uh, set the advanced filter uh, on the box already and not uh, the need on your um, um, calculation unit on the central unit which is still possible to uh, after filter but you transmit only the important information to the correlator which is uh, giving you even uh, better results as transmitting the full range of frequency. Also competitors measuring boxes, uh, they always uh, use black boxes. That means it's a device, you install it, you don't know if uh, there is any signal transmitted and what signal gets received. Uh, we always had the goal to show as much information as possible to the operator when they are on the field uh, bringing out the sensors and uh, directly getting a response and therefore we have this uh, very nice display there okay we have a very long uh, battery standalone time it's enough for a full working day without recharging uh, so it means uh, eight to ten hours it's a very ruggedized uh, housing here uh, aluminium coated uh, with ip68 rating if all connectors are plugged or connected um, so you can even uh, submerge them for a short time um, or let them uh, stand in the rain uh, which is a big improvement to our old mb3 and mb4 too uh, we have three different radio channels uh, available so we uh, have them uh, marked uh, by color red blue and yellow so each color stands for a different channel um, so in theory, or not theory, but uh, you can do three uh, point correlation uh, with uh, our MB6 too. Also, we have uh, lots of different uh, frequencies for the US, for example. Uh, Norway requires different uh, radio strength. So for each market, let's say we have uh, the suitable frequencies and uh, the matching we meet all the requirements there okay so far to the mb6 um, it's really nice i worked with them uh, already uh, a few times and i'm really convinced that uh, with this uh, you add more value to your daily correlation uh, work uh, when you are doing that um, for leak detection Okay, um, another new device, new development is our Aqua M60. Aqua M60 is, uh, was actually planned to substitute the Aqua M40, but now uh, we developed a complete uh, geophone or a new model, um, which is also handheld, but in the same time capable of uh, adding additional sensors on the connections boards on the bottom side of it. So you have here a port or a plug 
uh, where you can uh, also connect external sensors to the uh, Aqua M60. Um, I would say, and I wrote here, it's a clone between our Aqua M50, 40, and the M70. So we have uh, a handheld device, uh, but with the full functions of a geophone for with additional sensors attachable. Uh, we have a numerical value of the noise signal. Uh, we have Bluetooth headphones, uh, Bluetooth communication, uh, um, and uh, we also have filter functions and we have some uh, illumination, like a small torch uh, on the top of the device. And we have the integrated sensor on the device, so you don't necessarily need an additional sensor to be adapted attached to make it operatable. Uh, of course, it uses the very recognized uh, sound quality from our M40 and 50. Uh, so this is shall developed and um, yeah, in the market since I don't know how many decades, probably 20 years or more. Okay, um, now uh, it's not like a new device or uh, something very uh, sophisticated or a product which we sell in large numbers and we make a, a big profit. Uh, this is not the case with the bubble creator, but it is adding again value to uh, most of uh, the tracer gas applications. Um, so this is a device or a tool uh, which creates very tiny bubble as you see here in the picture. Uh, in the uh, water column of the pipeline. And uh, this enables you to also apply tracer gas in still operatable uh, pipelines. So you don't need to shut off the supply, which is often uh, the case that you are obliged to always uh, let the supply uh, run. And the uh, bubble creator introduces the bubble, they flow with the water flow, and then ex, uh, uh, um, yeah, ex, ex, uh, come out of the leakage spot and you can detect uh, the tracer gas on the surface with the tracer gas detector, which is then our Aqua M300 or uh, uh, gas check. Um, again, I, it's not like it costs a lot of money, but uh, it's, a, it's a tool, additional tool, which added lots of value to your tracer gas application. And everyone who is familiar with tracer gas um, knows the boundaries uh, of the application, uh, but it uh, still has a very, very high uh, demand and uh, lots of people, especially in in uh, countries where you have only intermediate uh, water supply, I just think about India, for example, um, tracer gas application is just uh, uh, without question the best technology to use there. <clears throat> okay, it also reduces, if you use the bubble crater, uh, the amount of gas needed for uh, carrying out the measurement uh, by approximately 100. Uh, so you only need uh, less less gas uh, to introduce into the pipeline. <clears throat> and we use there our uh, unique sealing technology from the pipe mic uh, to keep the water pressure inside the pipe and still introduce the uh, gas in, uh, inside the pipeline. Everything is made of uh, stainless steel, so everything can be cleaned and disinfected before you insert it, uh, so it's absolutely safe for use as well. Um, even better than the pipe mic because you won't uh, push it continuously, but you push it inside once and then uh, you introduce, you connect your uh, hose from the gas bottle and uh, let the gas flow into the water. Um, if we are already there, I just say that um, when you introduce the gas, uh, we always say uh, that you should have not more than 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 uh, bars more water pressure than 
the normal water pressure inside the pipeline. Um, because uh, if you introduce too much gas, you won't create these tiny bubbles, but they grow bigger. Uh, if you uh, not apply too much uh, pressure from the gas side, they won't solve inside the water. So it's always um, yeah, a trade-off, like, or let's say um, you need to have some, uh, get some experience with it. Uh, I always listen to the, uh, to the streaming out of the gas from the gas bottle. And if it makes too high sound, like <laughs> it's uh, too much gas, which, uh, which comes out of the bottle. Um, if there is no sound, it's too less gas. Uh, because you won't see what you see here in this picture uh, when you introduce the gas inside your pipeline. Um, but you can hear, uh, maybe you can even uh, have a flow control uh, where you see the flow of the gas uh, out of your gas bottle. Okay. Um, now I have a video which shows uh, the bubbles, how they created, uh, play it again. Okay, we didn't hear anything. So you see here the very tiny bubbles which uh, get created. And if you have a uh, water flow, uh, they will be uh, carried with the water flow and it mixes quite well. It looks like sparkling water actually. And uh, this is also coming out of uh, the leak position and can be detected on the surface with the tracer gas uh, devices. Okay, um, another new uh, product, which are, is our HM2 mechanical listening stick uh, with improved design. You see here the uh, resonant uh, head. It's uh, much bigger and uh, also uses different uh, technology and build inside. Uh, it's uh, really, I compared, it's a better acoustic. Uh, the acoustic properties are better than uh, the one from our bronze uh, uh, material type. Um, <clears throat> and we also have a rubber piece, rubber ear piece. Uh, for a very comfortable use on the on the uh, ear, it feels quite uh, nice and won't be um, as cold as um, yeah if you put it on the bare metal. <clears throat> okay, but this is just a small product. We also uh, don't make much uh, profit on this side, but it's uh, still. Uh, sold in quite a good number, uh, the listening sticks, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, if you compare the costs of a listening stick towards a uh, acoustic listening device, it's uh, times five, times six higher uh, compared to geophones, which are then uh, already 10 times higher or even more. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I already introduced a little bit about the pipe mic flex in my uh, previous slides, but uh, because it's also quite new since last year, uh, we sold the first units. Um, I want to give it uh, more attraction also here in my new development slides. Um, it uses this ultra flexible black uh, cable, uh, which has a 2.2 millimeter um, um, fiberglass uh, core and therefore is more flexible than our blue cable which uh, has a three millimeter fiberglass cable core and which is this factor for the stiffness and uh, flexibility of such uh, yeah, push rods. We have a, a ultra flexible sensor head, which is completely made out of rubber. So there is no metal parts uh, within anymore, except of the tip. On the tip, we have a, a stainless steel ball uh, for the guidance. This is needed uh, if you want to take multiple bends 
at the same time. Um, we will introduce on uh, Thursday uh, about the listening devices and pipe mics. So uh, we will also showcase this in our webinars. <coughs> With the ball head, uh, you are able to go around multiple 90 degree bends. Um, so also uh, quite easy to get over it. Uh, you need, of course, a little bit of experience how much force you can apply, uh, what is too much might break uh, the rod or the, the head. Uh, so, uh, but we will showcase this in our Thursday webinar uh, in more detail. <clears throat> so uh, standard, we have a 50 meter cable. Of course, we could equip it with uh, more cable, but it doesn't make sense because the cable uh, um, is too flexible and you won't be able to push more than 50 meters of this kind of cable. Uh, it also contains the uh, feature of tracing the cable and also the sensor head. We have here inside the um, search coil uh, which can be detected by a cable on pipe locator. You attach it through this uh, banana checks here on the uh, central unit of the pipe mic. Okay, um, some uh, product which I like very much. It's maybe not a big, huge market for it, but it shows our innovative and uh, um, yeah, drive in development for fast uh, is our mobile master, which can be applied, uh, for example, in garbage trucks. It's, uh, it's a service master. You know, service master is the uh, link between our noise loggers and uh, tablet software, ASAT AOAD, which is free of charge from any app store, uh, Android app store. Um, and this mobile master is kind of a service master, but autonomously uh, receiving and transmitting the signal of the noise logger when it's applied in the field. And therefore the application in the garbage truck is the most suitable uh, because the garbage truck drives very slowly through the city. Uh, it stops every there and when uh, to collect the garbage bins from the street. and. Uh, so you don't need additional labor to drive into the field to collect data from your noise loggers. You don't need to install additional gateways or uh, repeaters and our water net installation to uh, transmit data from the noise loggers autonomously to our water cloud. Um, <clears throat> yes, and with the, with the mobile master, you only use the 12 volt power supply from the uh, truck or car. Uh, you could e even think, it's always a question about what's your relation to uh, the municipality. Um, for example, we applied this first time in Luxembourg uh, where we have very good resonance and feedback, but there it's very easy, the municipality uh, who collects the garbage is uh, the same organization uh, for the water supply. So they just talk to each other and said, look, we want to install this device in the garbage truck. And they did it. Uh, also, it doesn't require any uh, interference uh, from a human being. It needs to be installed and left in the truck. It always turns on if the truck driver starts the engine and it turns off uh, if the truck is uh, shut off. Um, all other settings are done in the instrument and saved and uh, it autonomously uh, does these tasks. Like I said, we applied that first time in Luxembourg where we have very satisfied customers. Um, in about uh, five garbage trucks where we installed this device, we collect about 1000 logger data every week and autonomously gets transmitted. So no interference of a human being in this case, except of the installation, of course, of the device and the setup of the device. Okay, um, another very new and interesting uh, product is our heating system logger. We call it HS logger. Um, the HS logger gets applied 
like it says, in heating system uh, infrastructure. Um, every like uh, city who has this um, uh, infrastructure. Um, usually in Germany, we use the Brande system. You see here in this small picture, uh, the Brande wires, uh, which runs through the insulation of the pipeline. And uh, in, the, in the past, we had to use a very expensive, very complicated measurement device from Brandes, uh, from the manufacturer of these uh, pipes, to um, run the measurements for detecting the leaks on the heating system pipelines. Um, I have to say also on the heating system pipelines, uh, we also now have a project in Dubai uh, for MEQ, uh, where we have uh, similar problems, like in the heating system, you have condensers, you have uh, uh, pumps running all the time, you have uh, heat exchangers, which creates a lot of noise. So you can't use our noise loggers and other technologies um, for detecting the leaks in the heating systems. But with uh, the heating system pipes we install here in Germany mainly uh, with the Brandes uh, wires inside, it's still very easy to detect leaks. Um, so we use the wires from the Brandes, we connect it to our uh, HS logger and um, it's a permanent monitoring of the leakage. So it runs uh, multiple measurements during the day and also during the night. Uh, it measures the resistance between the two wires and also the single uh, resistance of each wire. If there is uh, water, ex uh, um, how to say, leaking into the, le leaking into the insulation, it uh, reduces the uh, resistance between the wires and also on the wire itself. And uh, therefore you get a different value. Uh, which uh, is then shown on the tablet. It's again uh, similar to our noise loggers, but it's not the noise, it's the resistance you're measurement, uh, measuring. And you get the uh, visual uh, display of red, yellow, and green. Uh, green means everything is fine, the measurement uh, didn't detect any leakage, yellow possible, red uh, further investigate, of course. <clears throat> and uh, we have there very accurate results and very low costs of the devices. Uh, so you don't need to operate uh, manually a measurement device what was needed in the past from Brandes uh, to carry out measurements. Um, the device is using LoRa or uh, 433 megahertz for transmitting the data. Uh, to either a cloud server or directly to your uh, receiver unit, which is again a service master and a tablet with the uh, HS um, app application. So at the moment we have a beta version running in Munich, which is very successful. We still amend a little bit uh, on the hardware, not, not the hardware is finished, but the, uh, the firmware. Uh, because Munich wants to have some different uh, values shown on the device. Uh, but uh, soon we will release this to a wider market. And uh, this is, I believe, uh, very cost effective and, and, and good monitoring solution for the heating system pipelines. Okay, um, what is planned with FAST? I uh, will talk a little bit um, about uh, new projects, uh, which is exciting also to me. Uh, I'm a fan of uh, new technologies, uh, which you can also see in our initiative now with the webinars, which we host and also um, with our new developments. Uh, so we, we want to do something new for the future um, with artificial intelligence uh, called AI in uh, the abbreviation in English. Um, and with the, this new artificial intelligence algorithm, uh, which is still under development, if you call it here, um, 
we will be able to compare and analyze uh, leak noises versus ambient noise, environmental noises. Everyone who is familiar with leak detection with noise loggers knows the problems of false alarms, um, unwanted signals, uh, which still gets detected as a leak sound, um, which isn't a leak. And uh, with this artificial intelligence algorithm, uh, we would have a self-learning system capable of eliminating these false alarms. And um, the ideal software or the ideal solution for the consumer or customers is that he gets really condensed information and the system only alarms in case of a leakage. All the other data is just in the background for the uh, algorithm and uh, the user just gets an alarm. Okay, now something happened. Please go there and check. Um, we also test, this is uh, real research, uh, not development, this is research, basic research. Um, with Munich together, University of Munich, um, we uh, want to know if it's also possible with such an algorithm to even detect the leakage prior of the appearance. I have to um, explain a little bit more that um, we have certain hydraulic conditions inside pipelines, which also creates background noises or noises. And uh, if we continuously monitoring these noises, uh, we will be also uh, able to see if there is some uh, um, um, extra or, or abnormal pattern of the noise uh, before the leak starts to crack up and water escapes from the pipe. And um, like I said, this is basic research. It's uh, something which needs to be tested, but uh, yeah, it's probably in a few years where we can say, yes, this is really uh, a hit. We can use also such algorithms for uh, knowing leakages prior of appearance, which would be, of course, a <laughs> a perfect case for leak detection and, and uh, water companies uh, to uh, know already their weak spots and to repair maybe sections of the pipeline even prior of the appearance of leaks. Okay, this, like I said, is done and carried out together with the Technical University of uh, Munich. Okay, for this artificial intelligence, we have to use a lot of data. So every algorithm is living on data, 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 like Google. Uh, it knows so much because it uh, calculates millions, billions of data every second. Um, so therefore, we need to have uh, different data transmission possibilities. Um, we will use, and we already use in our noise logger, uh, LoRa as communication interface uh, to transmit the data. Uh, we are currently developing also a gateway uh, with narrowband IoT and LTE uh, for directly not only transmit the data but also communicate with the devices as if you are on site with the service master and tablet and uh, download additionally information or program, for example, correlation inside the logger and request special tasks from the logger. Sigfox is uh, playing a minor role, so it's not, uh, not interesting for us to focus on this technology because uh, yeah, it's declining market shares. LoRa is the one which is uh, still applied a lot of times in the world. Okay, <clears throat> we already finished LoRa, like I said, uh, LTE will be used for the gateway. Uh, I will introduce that uh, in a few seconds, a little bit more, what we plan to do with the gateway uh, and remote correlation possibility. We need to use LTE and 4G. Narrowband IoT uh, is the next technology to be implemented in the noise logger directly, uh, substituting or uh, analog to, to LoRa uh, data transmission. Like I said, Sigfox is playing a minor role. 
and still 433 megahertz radio frequency will always be possible to receive if you're outside in the field and uh, yeah also for programming the devices uh, and uh, so on uh, we will still use our well-known and uh, reputable uh, radio frequencies okay this is an overview about um, our different data transmission possibilities uh, what I introduced to, to you just new for example is the mobile master everyone knows the application with service master and tablet to receive our noise logger data in the field and uh, the possibility to transmit the data to a cloud server uh, through the tablet directly through a, through a sim card in the tablet um, now new uh, in development and uh, what is released in a few months uh, is our gateway so we are already close to finish this project it was meant to be uh, uh, to have the first prototypes uh, available for IFAT show to introduce to our customers. The gateway is a direct link to the logger. It's similar to a service master, just cl uh, put close to the logger uh, or installed, in, uh, for example, on a light pole. And you can directly communicate from the web application from our water cloud with the logger as if you are in the field uh, with a tablet and service master. This is the gateway. <clears throat> and uh, everyone also probably heard about our WaterNet solution. WaterNet is uh, the data transmission possibility through a network of repeaters and network master. Network master collects all this data and sends this condensed information out through uh, uh, 3G communication and 4G to uh, cloud server again. Okay, um, yes, here on the right you see uh, BD LoRa. Uh, soon we will have also BD NV IoT, uh, which communicates directly, um, but this will only be possible to transmit uh, the noise data, uh, not. Uh, be possible to do, for example, a remote correlation or remote requesting additional information from the loggers uh, from your web application like WaterCloud. Okay, <clears throat> then a little bit more into the details of the gateway. Our gateway, which is currently under development and which is uh, soon to be finished, uh, you can also connect uh, instead of a radio receiver, which is then communicating by radio to the already um, sold and still producing thousands of them each year, uh, BD noise loggers. Uh, you can directly connect also a smart sensor. A smart sensor in this case, of course, we start with acoustic sensor, which is our core technology for leak detection. But we also want to uh, follow with pressure sensors, level sensors, for example, moisture sensors, flow sensors, or even function controls for pumps uh, to, to know if a pump is running on or off, yes or no, for example. Uh, for the gateway, we will have this possibility to attach any of this kind of smart sensors to it, uh, either directly to the gateway, or if you want to use, for example, multiple uh, sensors, we will have then the possibility to attach a connector box with different uh, interfaces, and you can connect up to five smart sensors at the same time with one gateway. Of course, the standard application in the field will always be that you have one uh, acoustic sensor with the gateway and the gateway pushes this data to the cloud and also receives requests from the cloud and uh, then um, sends you in return the required data of what you requested. Okay, uh, that's all for the today's webinar.